So yes, I have spent quite a bit of time with Biomutant exploring every nook and cranny this game has to offer. And I'm going to give my honest opinion about this game. In fact, my brutally honest opinion. We're going to be talking about the good and the bad. And there is a lot of good with this game. Believe you me. Does it live up to the hype? Well, let's talk about it and find out, shall we? So hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here. Hope you're doing good. And let's dive into... Bio Mutant, shall we? We're going to first start out with the good stuff, and then we will head into the things that I really uh, have enjoyed about the game. Now, I have not completed the game. Just remember that one. This is not like a proper review. This is just my experience so far. So, yeah, exploring the world in Bio Mutant is an absolute joy as i have found that there's always something new to find and discover whether it's going to be new mounts as you can see i'm riding this mythical creature right here but you can also like seek out these other really cool mounts as well like this dark mount which is a lot faster and uh you know if you're a dark type character in this game which can do that i'll get into that in a little bit more uh yeah you can actually choose a dark path and find this really cool mount that kind of mirrors what you want to do uh in the game now also there's vehicles to find gliders but there's a ton of loot weapons and unique rewards to actually uh you know unlock plus yes there's this entire crafting gear system which is to be expected with an rpg uh in this day and age and it works really well of course uh, you're, you're going to find a lot of really cool stuff and uh, be able to explore in this game. Uh, now, this is a proper RPG, by the way, meaning you're going to have choices in this game. And you're going to be able to choose a light path or a dark path. And then, like, say, midway through the game, if you not, don't like your choice, you can actually betray entire factions and clans as well. As you get the hint, this is a proper open world RPG for sure now uh also your path that you choose in this game light or dark is actually going to influence the abilities that you obtain in the game whether it's going to be light abilities for example if you choose the light path you're going to be uh, getting access to you know freezing abilities if you choose the dark path you're going to be getting access to fireballs and that sort of thing uh, and of course, that's going to encourage multiple playthroughs with this game for sure. Also, another thing that encourages the play, uh, multiple playthroughs is the fact that there are two different endings with this game. Now, I'm not going to get into story spoilers with this one, but it sounds like the endings are going to be really, really cool from what I can gather so far. So, uh, yeah, it seems like your choice is going to really matter in this game from what I can tell. Uh, now, of course, uh, that choice does extend to crafting melee weapons, guns. You can uh, get boomerangs, uh, certain uh, tribal weapons that are extremely unique, tribal gear from facing off against uh, certain tribes in the world. There's like six of them. Half of them are dark, half of them are light. And again, you can betray some of the tribes down the road. That's going to be your choice. But yeah, there's a lot of really cool powers, including, uh, you know, uh, goo that is poisonous goo that you can plop down in the middle of battlefield uh you can have a trail of fire on the battlefield as well some really really cool stuff there but there's also really cool survival mechanics in the game too this is like more minor stuff but it does really uh kind of make exploring a lot more fun at least in my opinion in this example right here we have a heat zone it's warning us that we're getting you know too hot basically and you can either up your resilience uh, for heat or you can go find a heat resistant suit and there's several different types of zones in this game poisonous biohazardous zones uh you know cold zones and so on and so forth and there's certain ways to actually tackle these zones which again is a lot of fun in my opinion and ups uh the exploring fun factor at least in my opinion a lot uh, so yeah, that's something you can look forward to for sure with this one. Now, the actual story itself, again, I'm not going to get into too much stuff here, but it's a lot of fun, and I actually find it fascinating. Uh, I'm going to get into the narrator in just a moment. You can hear him in the background right now, but uh, it kind of reminds me of Fable. That's the thing. It definitely has a Fable feel to it, and I personally love Fable, uh, but some of you may be annoyed by this narrator. So that brings me to some of the things that are bad about this game or things that you might not like 
about the game. So one thing that is definitely true of this game is the intro is very long winded. So some of you may be like, okay, get on with the point. Let's get past this. I felt that way towards the tail end of the intro section with this game. Um, but yeah, I think it takes like roughly an hour to actually get past that intro. But a lot of you may really enjoy the actual backstory and the story that's actually being told right there. And again, some of you may fall in love with the narrator. Some of you may uh, find it uh, really annoying. You could turn down the narrator, of course. But for me personally, I find it kind of enduring because it reminds me of Fable. So that's where I stand with the narrator. I actually love it. Plus, there's these two other creatures that represent light and dark in the game. And they're uh, these funny floating characters. Again, reminding me a lot of Fable with the quirkiness. And also this kind of like, I guess you would say, British accent going on in the game as well. Now, continuing with some of the bad stuff. Uh, some of the combat controls are a little clunky in areas, especially when you get into the Super Wang Fu stuff, because it just doesn't lock on appropriately at times. Um, but I have found uh, that following what the game wants you to do, that is combos, really can help out with this uh, for sure, at least in my opinion. That's what I discovered, slowing down the combat yourself can help alleviate some of that clunkiness. Uh, now, also, there's some graphical hiccups here and there. You'll see pop-ins and pop-ups, but, uh, you know, I'm playing on the PS5, by the way, if you wanted to know. This is a PS4 version up res to the PS5. I'm getting the 60 frames per second. It's still at 1080p. It's not at 4K. They do plan to, I think, do a next-gen upgrade for this game, but that's one of the bad things I guess you would consider is that it's not like a proper, proper next-gen experience. But for me personally, I just want the 60 frames per second and I still feel like the world is beautiful and like whimsical and weird which I think is missing in this day and age with gaming and stuff so I really really do appreciate that for sure uh, now also some of you may actually not like the fact that there is this dark and light path that you choose in the game and the fact that that actually locks certain abilities behind choosing whatever path you take so if you choose the dark path you're going to get certain abilities but you're not going to get access to those light abilities and some of you may actually like be like hey i don't like being locked off from those abilities just because i chose dark you know the darkness so that might be something that uh you might not like for me personally i think it's great it makes your character unique it makes you choose a defined path, but I'm just warning you about that just in case if you wanted to know. Now, also, one thing that I did find to definitely be true with this game is that your character, of course, is small. I don't know exactly what he is. He's kind of like, I don't know, a rat of some sort <laughs> or like a fox type creature. But when you begin facing off against bigger creatures, especially if there's multiple creatures on screen at once, your character can get lost in the mix. For sure, like it can become a problem where you're actually being lost in the geometry of the character. So that's one of my things. I wish you can kind of adjust the camera angle a little bit more, get zoomed in there. You know, we've played games like God of War where it's up close and personal. You see all the detail. That's kind of what I do wish could happen. Sometimes you, your character just gets lost in all the explosions and things going on. Although that is somewhat rare. You guys, you guys are gonna have to try it yourself and let me know what you think. Now, let's talk about what I am looking forward to because I have not finished the game, of course. Uh, now, one thing that I do love about this game, this is what the developers have confirmed, is the core story is gonna be roughly around 15 hours long if you just breeze through the main uh, story path. But overall, the game can take players uh, up to anywhere from like 65 through 100 hours if you do all of the content in the game. And I just love that you have that option of being able to finish the game within 15 hours if you just want to enjoy the story or if you want to experience everything, you also have that option. But let's say you do want to experience everything, but you're like, wow, I'm just not having the time anymore. You have the option of immediately going to the main story and finishing it, which again, something that I give kudos to the developers for actually making that decision. Now again, there should be a next-gen upgrade with this. That's what I've heard. 
I, I will definitely keep you guys in the know as to what happens with that, but that's something I'm actually looking forward to. But right now, you know, the game runs really smooth on PS5. And one thing that the developers have been is very transparent about showing PS4 base gameplay, Xbox One base gameplay. And that's running at 30 frames per second. And of course, PC is running at the, I think it's 4K. You can do 4K, 60 frames per second and really push it. The PC is gonna be right now the definitive edition, but hey, I like my PS5 controller and I really do enjoy uh, playing on my PS5 right now. But yeah, so far I'm really enjoying Biomutant and I'm curious to see if this turns into a franchise because I feel like people are actually excited for it. I've seen some of the comments out on the subreddit and the community, it seems like people are really, really enjoying it so far. But yeah, my opinion is uh, I'm enjoying it. I've played uh, many, many hours of the game so far. And uh, I have yet to really get into the end game, but so far, awesome stuff. Can't wait to keep going. Let me know what you make of Biomutant from what you guys see. Let me know if it's something you're going to be picking up. Uh, sound off in the comments below, but stay tuned for more coverage. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching and take care.